Well, back to another edition of Flight Tying for Beginners with Jim Mishura. Today we're going to try and tie this is one of my favorite uh, dry flies uh, especially when they're they're really picky fish. This is what I call a flimp. I'm sure if you look it up you can find several definitions of the flimp but what I consider a flimp is a floating nymph. But uh, the hook that I'm having the vise, this is a size 16 and this is a two extra long shank but it is a light wire. You can use a standard uh, dry fly hook from standard up to 2x. We're also going to put a tail on there and the tail is going to be uh, Cotillion uh, fibers, which is they are very long and stiff hackles. They have very little web. You can see that that little dark spot on the bottom. That's the web. So you can see how long and stiff those those uh, barbels are, and they make great tails. But for the body, I'm actually going to use this is the rest of that same feather. I'm going to use this. Uh, this stem for the body of this fly and now you can use for the bodies you can use different things you got to think about it it's a floating nymph or you know it's a hatching it's a hatching uh, mayfly you can use from for the body you can use a uh, pheasant tail you can just use what I use all a lot is the shoelace pulled apart and a brown one or you can just go ahead and use the color that you're gonna make say like a sulfur and just use sulfur orange or sulfur yellow dubbing on the whole body that's one of the things I like about this this flimp is uh, there's it's so versatile and the way you tie it could be so versatile so we're gonna use the the stem for the body and those few hackle barbels that are left, I'm going to use that for the uh, tail. And then for the hackle, I'm going to use CDC hackle. And the color of the CDC hackle really depends, again, on what you're, what you're trying to imitate and such. But you can see here all the different colors of the CDC that you could get. But for beginning, on the safe side, the safest thing to do is just get the natural color. Don't get any any uh, dyed ones. You want either a natural or a tan is good. I would recommend getting a natural and a tan. This is more of a cream. This is a uh, pale morning done color. But that's a good one to get. And here's the tan. You can see that tan color natural uh, tan and pale morning done or cream is probably your best ones just starting you can get black if you want but you want to stick with those natural colors you don't necessarily want an orange or a yellow or even a olive don't worry about that I mean the natural and the cream and the tan the most they're the most uh, natural looking so don't go crazy buying a whole bunches of different colors of them so I'm gonna go ahead and start I'm gonna use a tanned red you could use black it all depends again on the what you're trying to imitate but this is gonna be kinda like a generic type one I'm gonna start the thread behind the eye and come back you can see how much that hook is bouncing because this is a fine wire hook you don't need a fine wire hook you can use a standard dry fly hook and mostly the differences between uh, wet fly nymph hooks and dry fly hooks is the weight of them so I couldn't break that one off so I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim that 
I'm going to take my uh, hackle and I'm standing them up at that 90 degree and by doing that you, you pretty much align the tips and now I, I you see I pinched it and it's curved but that's going to keep those tips aligned there we go nice alignment on the tips and now this tail you can move you can keep this tail a little bit longer on this too so I'm going to make that tail almost the size of the hook shank I'll go ahead I start them on my side give it a loose loop pull it straight down and I know that they're on top and I'm just going to quickly whoop I caught the butt the the uh, point go up and they keep going trying to push those barbels to the top there we go and now I can trim them off now I'm gonna go ahead and take my thread back and I'm gonna give it a wrap underneath the tail and then directly on top that should keep it nice and straight now the reason I'm going to use this this uh, stem is because it's almost gone and I just kind of hate to see that go to waste another thing you could do is you can use a stripped peacock hurl and to strip your peacock hurl you just take one out one peacock hurl out of the package put it on your table and use the uh, a pencil eraser and go against the grain and it'll pull them right off I'm gonna go ahead and tie this in and you can see I got that longer tag on there and I'm gonna go ahead and t wrap that all in when you're wrapping stuff like this like the uh, stem body or a peacock curl body you want to make sure that you keep that pretty straight or even make a taper from the you know skinnier at the back and bigger at the front but you don't you don't have to because you're only giving the impression here it's not you don't have to you don't have to have a, a, a nice big taper or anything like that because you know you're gonna have first of all you're gonna have some CDC flowing over the back and the fish are either gonna take it quickly or they're not going to sit there and inspect it that bad and they're not going to refuse it because the body's not tapered but let's put it that way now I'm going to take a little bit of head cement I don't want it a lot I put some head cement on my hook shank there and I'm going to wrap my body I am just doing this so I can I can see and get around the barb or the point of the hook better there we go I was actually caught on it there and just get those those wraps touching when you're using a, a quill body or the stem body now I'm gonna just rotate my vise and hopefully this will come out there we go whoop back it up and you can actually now that I'm past the point I can actually hold it towards the back a little bit and it'll roll off the previous wrap right into position just slightly you don't want to go far because you'll double wrap it and I can see my stem is splitting there a little bit I'm just going to grab that and push that to the front and kind of get that folded into there we go now that little split is underneath and I give it a couple of more wraps and it's starting to split again so I'm going to end it there and this will be more like the nymphal shuck I'm going to go ahead and tie that in get that first wrap keep that thread tight and then this one you can actually 
take it and kind of get it going forward there a little bit. And I'm gonna pull it back and wrap in front and wrap it tight to it. Now this one you can sometimes break it or you take your poke and snip and trim that off. And I threw that stem away because it was kind of getting large. Kind of getting a little bit too fat. Now there's our shuck. Now we can go ahead and they got a nice uh, quill body on there. Now we can put dubbing on there according to what kind of uh, insect we're trying to imitate. And since this is light, a light color, I'm going to go ahead and make this one a, a uh, Cahill. And I'm going to take some Cahill cream dubbing. And this is the Antron again. Just take it and stretch it out. I'm going to pull that upside down so I can get my fingers in there. Get yourself a nice thin noodle. So now this is going to, this, this part, this Cahill cream is going to represent the bug coming out. Give them more of the color that they're actually seeing. Cahill or pale evening done or pale morning done. Whatever you want to call it. And we're going to stay about one and a half to two eye lengths away from the eye. Now since I made this the cream or the pale, I'm going to go ahead and use that pale morning done. Uh, CDC. I'm going to take one out. And now with the with this, I got the sun shining through there. Sorry about that. Now with the CDC, you can go ahead and tie it in by the tip. And if the stems are thin enough, tying it in by the tip is no problem at all. But what I like to do is put it in my dubbing my dubbing loop which is this is my dubbing block or my my dubbing loop block and you can make this you can check out my video on how to make this very very simple but to, in order to put it in here I'm gonna prepare it first and what I do is I trim off the front I'm gonna trim off a little bit of that of that tip and then I keep these, keep the uh, barbels at 90 degree. And then you put this right on the, put it, put the stem right on the split. Take your bodkin needle and just push that stem right down inside. And that front part isn't going down. There we go. And now, doing this, doing it like this way, you're not going to have so much bulk when you wrap it. When you wrap that stem, even if with a very skinny one, you're, it's going to add bulk to it. So I'm going to take my dubbing loop tool, and it's two, two uh, hooks on it put it on there go around it and we just want to get a loop in there so we'll go ahead and secure it it's a good idea to put at least one around the thread itself and I'm going to leave that thread about halfway to the eye now I'm going to take a little bit of wax and wax my thread even though you don't see it on there that's that helps now I'm going to take my dubbing block and here I have, this is just a chip clip. I got them six for a dollar at everything is a dollar store. And I'm going to clip my CDC in there and then I usually hold it and I take it out. Now you see there's a couple of them that are sticking up the top there, not a big deal. 
So now we're just going to trim that close to the stem. And then we're going to take our loop and we're going to open our loop up. We're going to put that chip clip right in there. I put it and then we're going to, I made this loop a little bit too small and we're going to slide it off and it's going to grab the CDC and then we're going to let it go. And now here we have, you can see we have the CDC in there. I'm going to move this thread away and I'm going to pinch the thread and I'm going to spin my loop. Like I said, this, this loop I made a little bit too small but then after you spin it, spin the loop several times, let go of the thread and it will spin it. So we got a nice little CDC hackle that's only thread. And as we wrap it, we're going to just stroke everything to the rear. And don't worry if it looks doesn't look like it's coming coming out right. Just continue to do it. And try to get a good amount on there. And like I said, just keep stroking everything to the rear. I got some going off to the back. I'm going to pull them towards the rear. There we go. And that's going to be my last wrap on there. I'm going to go ahead and tie that in. Take two or three. Then you can take that and pull that thread back and tie on top of it. Just to ensure that it's not going to come apart on you. Take that poke and snip. And always, whenever you're cutting with scissors or the poke and snip or whatever, use that finger and get that thread out of the way. So you don't cut the wrong one. Now I could go ahead and again hold everything to the to the back moving everything away from that eye and then I can wrap the head now we're going to take our whip finish tool and again take the hook hook it go around the camel hump and now the, the turn it up and there is your crossover right there slide that X to the shank and then just twist it take the hump out slide it up take the hook out take your poke and snip trim that there and I put a little bit of head cement on there Clean my brush off pretty well. Like I said, this is a very good this is a very good pattern and when they're when they're getting a little picky, you give them something that's uh that looks like it's struggling to escape. That's that's the one they're gonna eat. And now, you know, if if you uh if it looks ratty and stuff just take your dubbing teaser or your piece of velcro and just kind of comb it you can kind of comb it forward and or back and what you're going to do is you're going to pull the hackles or the barbels out that might that may have been trapped now this is a cdc so it's going to float very well. I got a couple real long ones. I'm just going to nip them. You can leave them long if you got several of them and let them drag, drag in back of it. But you can see they're going to be able to see everything very nicely. And make yourself a few of these different, different color combinations, you know, for the different hatches and different sizes and you'll be pleased pleasantly surprised at uh, the results that you get
you're still dry fly fishing you can see this very well because the CDC is going to be on top you're going to see that very well and still there's going to be some of that hook and stuff that's going to be in the film just like that struggling mayfly and they're going to they're going to just eat that right up so I hope that you learned something from this video. I hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. Please visit my sponsors. Let them know I sent you. If you'd like to purchase any of these flies that I make, go to etsy.com slash shop slash flyman gym. If you don't see it there, just send me a message and we'll figure things out. Leave comments, questions, suggestions, and most of all, thank you very much for watching my videos.